Hi, my name's Andy Tidy and welcome back to another summer edition of Canal Hunter. At the moment we're travelling along the Staffs and Worcester Canal, a canal which was engineered by James Brindley 250 years ago. Now this canal itself has remained remarkably unchanged since Brindley's days. He would very definitely um, uh, recognise the current layout. What has been lost in the intervening 250 years are the two main branches the Hatherton branch and the Stafford branch. Now, maybe I'll cover the Hatherton in another episode, but for now I want to take a look at the Stafford branch. I think one of the issues with the Staffs and Worcester Canal is the limited number of towns it goes through. I mean, you've got Kidderminster and you've got Starport, but they're all down at the southern end. It doesn't really pass through any major towns in the north and the greatest omission has to be the historic town of Stafford. Now of course the town of Stafford wanted to get in on the benefits of the canal age but the canal runs about a mile and a half to two miles from the town centre. So what they did in the first instance was to create a tramway that went from Radford Bank. Unfortunately this tramway wasn't a financial success and by 1813 it had closed down. Now whilst this tramway wasn't a success, there was still felt to be a need to connect the town of Stafford with the canal system. And so in 1816 a navigation was created from Baswich, maybe that's Basich, I'm never quite sure how to say that, but it was connected from Baswich down onto the River Sow and then they used a mile and a half off the Sow River Channel to get boats up into the town and there they built the coal wharfs and supplied and added to the prosperity of Stafford as a town. There's not an awful lot to be seen of the entrance into the Stafford navigation today. It exited just opposite what was the Bazich Salt Works. It's now the site of River Canal Rescue's headquarters. It went through a hundred yard basin, it went over a short aqueduct and then into the, into the navigation's only lock, St Thomas's lock, which more or less dropped the water down six foot six, depending on the levels of the river below. Boats then travelled upstream along the bed of the straightened river Sow for about a mile and a half before they entered the centre of the town of Stafford. Stafford names it bridges according to colours, and at Whitebridge the river was split into two, the river went to the east and there was a, a canalised section that went along to Greenbridge on the, on the west. to be said that this rapid navigation wasn't actually a great success either. In fact the whole thing was sold to the Staffs and Worcester Canal Company in 1838 for the princely sum of £50. Anyhow the Staffs and Worcester continued to operate it through till 1927 by which time all the trade had come to an end and so the thing was left to go quietly to ruin. The lock chamber was filled in in 1935 and at the same time the cast iron aqueduct was removed. Eventually even the lock chamber was lost when they did drainage enhancements to the Sow Valley in the 1970s. And there I suppose the story should come to an end. Right back at the start of the leisure boating industry there was perceived to be benefit in restoring the River Sow navigation through to Stafford. But the problem lies not in the technological problems of recreating this link, but the nature of the valley that it passes through. This is the valley of the River Sow and the River Penk, both tributaries that flow into the River Trent. 
And if you ever happen to come through this area in times of high rainfall, you will find that this entire valley becomes one enormous lake. The floodplain really does live up to its name. It therefore comes as no great surprise to know that the Environment Agency is very, very careful about making sure that any changes to the water drainage ma management doesn't negatively impact the ability of this valley to drain the surplus water away when the need persists. And also, of course, that if boats were to use it, that they wouldn't come into trouble themselves. And so, for many, many years, most of the restoration effort revolved around negotiations and investigations to see if this could be made into a viable scheme. Well, after many years, this process did come to a satisfactory conclusion, and there is now a viable plan for the reconnection of Stafford through to the canal network, and a great addition it will be, in my humble opinion. A local enthusiast group has set, sprung up, and they have raised money and they have started building. So far they have built the basin, next they're looking to build the bridge and then it will be a case of building the lock down into the River Sow. Fortunately the drainage arrangements in the valley have changed since the day of the Stafford navigation and therefore the lock can now drop straight into the river without having to worry about that iron aqueduct. Now, whilst we can't yet take a boat through to Stafford, I thought I'd take a wander across the, the water meadows and to see what the route will be like. And the first half is just a lovely walk across the water meadows. And then we reach the start of the built structures. Fortunately, these are very boater friendly. All the bridges that have been built in the intervening years have been built to large dimensions, large enough to carry the floodwaters and crucially, also large enough to carry craft. The riverside has been lined with a very popular walk, and the second half, you're walking on the eastern bank of the river all the way through into Stafford, through parkland, through retail industrial estates, and eventually through to the town centre. at the moment the River Sow is nowhere near deep enough to get boats up. However, all it requires is one regulating weir just below the lock coming in and that will raise the water level all the way through to the centre of town. The challenge for the canal hunter of course is to try and identify the canalised section in Stafford. I mean this is something that has been lost for a hundred years. But if you look at the old maps the river still runs up and through Green Bridge and the Coal Wharf was immediately to the west of that, sitting directly underneath today's cinema complex. Well, what happens next? Well, so far there is a, quite an active volunteer base who have been busy building the basin opposite the old salt works. The next things they need to do are to build a new towpath bridge, which will allow the basin to be filled with water and with moored boats. And then from there on, they can then build the lock down into the river and from there the money starts to get probably into rather larger figures. I suspect that the water control weir will cost quite a lot of money. However, with those engineering works done at the bottom end, it won't take very long to complete the rest of the work all the way through to the town. How long will it take? Well, my normal answer to any restoration project is 20 years. At close enough to feel tangibly close, but far enough away to hedge my bets. But I suspect with this one, if they can get 
the money together to get that infrastructure sorted out at the bottom and there is a will on the part of the Environment Agency, the whole process could happen very quickly. Anyway, I took a nice collection of photos as I walked up into town and I flew my drone as far as I could. There are some limitations, you can't fly anywhere near prisons and when I started to see the warning signs appearing on my screen I turned the drone back to home. Anyway, I hope this video gives you a taste of what the old Stafford navigation used to look like and also what the Sal Riverway could look like in the future. But for now, cheerio and happy hunting. Thank you.